So today I thought I would finally make a start on some of my colouring pencil comparisons um, and I thought I would start with Crayolas because I have two types of Crayolas. I have these regular kind of classic set of 12 and I also have the Crayola twist balls. Now the classic Crayolas um, I think are great. Um, they come with in a set of 12 and of course you can get the other size sets and they're really cheap. Um, the pencils have the names on them which is great so we've got black, brown, white, yellow, orange, red orange, red, sky blue, violet, blue, yellow green and green. Um, which is uh, you know a good set of colours and you can get by with these for sure um, because of course you can mix colours as well if you like especially because you've got a white that helps to with the blending if you don't have a blender pencil so we'll be testing those here we have the Crayola Twistables now these are really really fun um, we have no information on them about colour, um, just the Crayola website and the fact that it's twistable. Um, now they all come um, with the uh, nibs kind of hidden away and then what you do is you twist the end bit here around and the lead comes out. Um, and the thing about these is that as you can see as I twist more out it comes out with quite a sort of waxy white kind of film on it um, which doesn't really concern me at all because um, other kind of clutch pencil and mechanical pencil lead sometimes have that if they're coloured um, but they come obviously flat at the bottom and there's no way of sharpening it really um, of course this is the benefit and a negative really because um, if you're you know using it just for fun just for coloring in your coloring books and things or if you're a kid and you don't have a sharpener on you 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 know you don't have to worry about it because you can just keep going and keep going and twist more out and keep going but if you want to use any kind of detail work or if you want to like layer your colors you are gonna need to sharpen it really um, and the only way you can do that really is if you get a, well you could do it with a knife but that's a bit dangerous, um, but the only way you can do it is to buy a lead sharpener. Um, I have one here uh, which is a Faber-Castell one and it's this teeny tiny little sharpener and what you actually do is you get lots of lead out and then obviously over a bin you pop the lead in like that and you sharpen it as you normally would. So it's a bit of a delicate process but definitely recommended if you want to do layering and that's what I've been doing because I wanted to test you know how vibrant the colours lay down and how they how they mix. So this pack actually comes in a set of 10 rather than 12. You don't get a white, you get a yellow, an orange, a red, a purple, two blues, uh, two greens, and a brown and a black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first test, I'm going to test all of the colours on their own. Um, I'm also going to do three blending tests. I'm going to use a Copic marker. Um, now Copic markers are Sorry, a Copic blender. Copic markers are alcohol based and the blender is just the alcohol on its own. So um, this actually works as a blender for colour pencils as well as other media. So I'm going to do one blending test with that. I'm also going to do a blending test with the Derwent blender. Now what this is, is kind of like a colourless pencil. So it's a waxy pencil that is basically doesn't have any pigment in it so what you're doing with it is you're pushing the colour around and you're blending it. So I'll test that and lastly I will be using Zestit, which 
which is an oil paint dilutant but you can also use it with colour pencils um, and this is basically another kind of alcohol um, liquid um, that kind of smells nice uh, not that you should go sniffing it but it kind of it's much more pleasant than using um, you know turpentine or any other kind of oil um, dilutant so I'll be doing three blending tests and I will also be doing a kind of general blend mix so I'll be using the primaries red yellow and blue and I'll be mixing those into a green orange and purple um, and then I'll choose my favourite blending method and I'll also try that on there as well to see if it smooths it out. So let's get testing.
that I'm all done with my testing, I can definitely say that the regular Crayolas are much, much better. Um, they are more comparable to other colour pencils, whereas the Twister Balls are much more like wax crayons. Um, you know, like the Crayola wax crayons you used when you were small. It's kind of like that. Um, now the Crayolas went down nicely, the, the regular pencils, um, and you could kind of get a nice gradient from dark to light, and that's what I did with all these little colour swatches. Um, when it came to the white, I didn't, I didn't test the whites on this paper as such, I did a little pink blend here with the red. Um, let's just, let's just get that up a bit closer. Which worked alright, not brilliant, but alright. Um, and then moving on to the blending, I did red, several layers of red here with a Copic blender. And that worked pretty well. Um, I'd say that was my second favourite choice. The My second, sorry, my third choice would be the Derwent blender. And the problem I find with the Derwent blender is that even though it's a colourless pencil, it kind of acts a bit like a white in that when you blend out a colour, it lightens it. So instead of being a vibrant red, this has gone pinky. And my number one favourite was the Zest It. Um, it just seems to allow you to keep layering and layering and it stayed really, really vibrant. So I really, really was quite impressed with that. Then when it came to mixing the colours, um, as you can see the Crayolas do quite well to make a purple, an orange and a green, so they can blend. And using my favourite blending technique, which was Zest It, um, I was able to smooth out the colours and get rid of some of those white speckles in the background. So, but that was quite successful overall I'd say, because we had a white in the regular Crayolas, I tested the whites on a piece of brown craft card um, and the white comes on quite nicely, it's, it's not hugely opaque but it's, it's still got a nice effect on the brown. And then I tried my pink again here and again it's okay but it's not great. So, um, so the white definitely comes in handy especially if you're going to be drawing on toned paper. And then Moving on to the Crayola Twister Balls, I was a little bit disappointed to be honest with these because having swatched them when I bought them I thought oh these are nice and pigmented and they're going down you know with the thicker leads I thought this this is going to be fun to use these and, and I, I thought they were pretty vibrant but having laid them down um, successively and with other colours I, I really did struggle with them. Um, now the individual swatches here around the edge in the smaller circles um, they look okay they don't they, they don't you know they don't look worse than the uh, regular swatches there as such so if you're doing just some regular coloring then you you'd get on fine with these but I do find them quite slippery so when you lay them down it feels like you have less control um, and because of the wax waxiness, you know, it kind of makes it feel a, a bit slippery. And when it came to the blenders, none of them seemed to want to work very well. Um, it doesn't look too bad now after I've done a few layers, but the Copic blender just didn't really seem to do anything at first. Um, likewise with the other two, with the Zest It and the Derwent blender. I'd say with these Crayola Twister Balls, the Derwent blender actually worked the best because it, I was really able to sort of dig in and push the colour around to smooth it out but it, I'm not entirely convinced that the alcohol ones, so the Copic blender and the Zest It, I'm not entirely convinced that the effect I've got here wasn't mainly because of me layering a lot and really pushing the waxy pencil into the paper. Um, I'm not, I don't really think the blender did very well at all with those. And it, it's kind of proved by the colour mixes here. Um, in comparison to the regular pencils where you can definitely see which side I've blended and which side I haven't with the Zest It, on this one you can't really tell. Um, we've got a, a, a few less white specks perhaps on the bottom half of the circles but it's not really done anything. Um, so 
yeah that was difficult and also the more I layered these the more kind of lines and things were were appearing instead of instead of a nice smooth blend it was just becoming harder and harder to layer but having said that we have successfully made a green and orange and a purple so you know there are things you can do with these twistables and they are really fun pencils i do really enjoy them but i would say for artists out there definitely recommend the crayola regulars um, over the twistables so I hope that's helped you if you were a bit confused as to what the Twistables were all about. And as I say, I am going to be doing a series of colour pencil comparisons. I have a big collection now and I've been meaning to do it for a long time. So I will be doing a lot of reviews of different brands and, you know, comparisons of kind of cheap and affordable versus the more expensive ones and so forth. So I'm really looking forward to that and I hope you'll enjoy it too. Um, so yes, today was the Crayola comparison um, and I think we have a clear winner with the Crayola regulars. Um, great pencils, they're super cheap so I definitely recommend you go and grab them and have a good play. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.